How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Z-Bar transition and get professional results just like this in your doorways. So the first thing that we're going to do, uh, go ahead and get our tack strip and Z-Bar cut to the length that we need. I've already got my tack strip cut here to the length, but the Z-Bar is actually going to be a little bit longer than my Z, uh, tack strip and should be really good. I only have to cut two two notches in it. If you try to cut right here in the center, I'll show you what happens right there. If you'll come in right here, we'll take a look at this. So if you take this Z bar, you can kind of see how it goes over, down, and then over again. If you try to cut all the way through that at one time, it's just going to smash it all and make it all flat. I'll show you what it does right here. Even if you just go part way through it like that, it just kind of straightens it out right there. So you see how now this is all bent out of proportion. So to get a proper cut without messing your Z-Bar all up, simply cut on that side, cut on that side. Then you still have your little center piece nice and square, and then just bend it back and forth a couple times, and you keep your same shape in your Z-Bar so it don't mess it up. So that's what I've done right here. Okay, so if you'll see, this is in the shape of a Z, and that's why it's called Z-Bar. So this flat spot right here, goes on the floor underneath of the tack strip and this sticks out this is actually a quarter inch it's the thickness of the tack strip right here and then this will be fanned up in the air right there okay so we're going to place this bottom piece underneath of the tack strip i want to take just give myself a little notch right there see how i cut that i'm going to do the exact same thing on both pieces the part that goes under the tack strip i'm actually cutting just a little notch on it wide enough to get i'll show you what i'm doing that for wide enough right here to allow for that right there okay because that needs to come all the way back to here okay okay so i need to bring this all the way back to about right here again the carpet's going to be sticking out a little bit past the edges of the z-bar so I wanted to get it back as far as I possibly could there. Um, we got our Z-Bar under the tack strip and such. Now I'm going to go ahead and hammer it in place and then we'll... Okay, so the Z-Bar... Uh, that goes underneath there you can see just about how far it actually fits the nails that come in the tack strip are usually about centered so these nails will actually barely get a hold of this z-bar so i like to take and put me a few extra nails in it a little closer to the front of the z-bar to the front of the tack strip that way i am for sure to have nails penetrating through this z-bar and that's just going to give it a lot more hold whenever we start working our carpet and start stretching from it. I'm going to place them again just a little further up front. Now that is sure to be uh, penetrated right through the Z-Bar into the subfloor. Okay, I want to point out how close I am to the edge here. I have just a little bit of room on the edge before it touches my door casing, just a little bit, and the same thing on the other side. Just enough room to where it will be tapped down without squeak, uh, squeaking or scraping the edge of the door casing. Now we got that done, I'm going to go ahead and cut my pad off in the right area. All right, so we're going to take our carpet now. I always try to run my carpet out the room. Most of the time, you can place your carpet where it's running out of the doorway. That's just the most common way to do it. Uh, it makes your transitions look better here. I'm going to go ahead and get all this cut down. I'm going to take one cut right on the back side of that 
and right on the side of that and then trim this down to get it all tucked in and then we'll trim for our Z bar. So whenever I do this, I leave just about a, just about a, maybe an eighth inch longer than what I need. So it gives me something nice to tuck with. You don't ever want to cut carpet off flush. You always want to have some to tuck down in the gully between the tack strip and the door jam, the baseboard, whatever you're working to. Always want a little bit, an eighth or th uh, three sixteenths or something like that. Just don't cut it flush off. Okay, so. Now, we're gonna cut our carpet off to tuck underneath of this Z-bar. That is the point of it. Let me show you on this little scrap piece right here exactly how this works. So this is what it looks like when you have it installed on the floor. That's, that's what it looks like right there. You have your Z-bar underneath of your tack strip and you have this little bit of a lip here and that lip is for your carpet to tuck under. I want to make a couple valuable points on that, okay? Uh, whenever your carpet is overhanging the tack strip like that, or the Z-bar rather, you want it to be able to come around and just get, just cut it. Let's see here. Want to be able to, you want it to cut off just where it's going to tuck under and touch the back of the Z-bar there, okay? If you have it cut too much, it's going to either try to bunch all up on you whenever you do that and it's not going to look good or else you'll do this and then you'll have this extra bend of the carpet just fluffing you won't have anything to tap it down or secure it to the floor it may not ever come out but this part is not going to be pressed down on the floor like it should be and it's going to be sticking up and just look like a hump right at the edge of your transition so you definitely want to get this cut off properly. It's really important, okay? So again, uh, how much ever overhang we have right here, we got uh, a half inch, I'm guessing. So you want your carpet to wrap over and about a half inch long to where it can be coming under here really good. You don't want to cut it too short if it just falls about right here. Is very problematic because it's going to try to work its way out and stuff like that and then you're going to end up having to push your carpet back up and recut it and stuff like that so take your time on this you need it to come all the way back to here for it to be a good long-lasting result and just look good without any extra carpet sticking out this side of it over here okay so be be real careful on this part when you're cutting it okay so what I will do I will take and push my carpet down as flat as I can get it right here and because I know how much extra I need I need about a half inch so I'm just going to uh, judge from the edge of my Z bar right here I'm going to go a half inch up onto the carpet and that's where I'm going to cut it I might even go about five eighths or so from the edge of my Z bar here up onto the carpet so I'm going to cut this about right there okay that's going to give me enough to wrap around and fit to the back and look really good, okay? So, again, from the edge of this, because this is actually going to tap down, and when it does, it's going to pull that carpet a little less. So, if something is bent up at an angle like this, and then it straightens out, it's going to get a little longer. So, you got to give yourself just a little extra, but not too much, okay? So, give yourself maybe five-eighths of an inch or so to tuck under there and that will be good i'll show you here in just a second and we'll take we'll actually take a measure of this and we'll see exactly how much carpet we need there because what i'm cutting off here is about right for what we need okay So from the edge of my Z bar, we're going to measure this. That way we'll have a perfect example. Okay, so look at there. That's about an inch. That was actually more, more than I anticipated that it was going to take. So I was wrong on the half inch because what I got cut here is going to be perfect. Okay, let me double check that so I'm not. Yeah, okay. So whenever I do that, I can feel the carpet 
wrapping under this I can I can feel this carpet when I do that with my fingers I can feel it go under there and if it's got too much I can feel it because it's not going flush under there like that so I'm judging by my fingers here as I turn it under there to see if it's going to be bunched up or too much I can feel it nice and even all underneath of there okay Now that we got that, I'm going to take my stair tool just to make sure that it's going to be a nice, pretty edge without any uh, fiber sticking out or anything like that. I'm just going to tuck this, use that. You can use a five and one, a chisel, or whatever you need to do that. I'm going to tuck it in there, okay? Now, since I have that all prettied up underneath there, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hold it as I do this, okay? I'm going to hold this down and right on the edge of the metal. I want to be real specific on this. Right here on the edge of the metal is where I want to tap this down, okay? I do not want to tap it here on the tack strip. I simply want to tap this edge down that has the met has the carpet wrapped underneath of it, okay? So that's what you're fixing to see me do. Okay, I, I want to put my fingers under here and hold the carpet in position as I tap that edge down, okay? go all the way across and then I'll show you what you need to do whenever you're done just to make sure that you got it all good okay so it's all all tapped down there now I'm going to put some pressure on this with my fingers and I'm going to rub over it and you'll be able to feel if there's any bumps or any spots of that metal that needs beat down a little bit more and I can definitely feel some here now, this is something that you need to do every time just for a clean consistent look a little bit more right there right here right there was a little bit this will really tell on you if you miss a little spot and doing this you'll have a nice clean consistent look okay all right that feels pretty good right there finish tucking in the edges of it Okay, one last thing that we need to do to this before we are completely finished up. I want to point something out, and this just happens on any type of carpet. A little less likely to happen on a, a loop pile carpet. Definitely happens on every type of cut pile carpet. So if you look really close here, I'm sure there's going to be some spots that need a little bit more of attention. So if you'll see uh, right here, you can actually see some of those fibers are pushed down underneath there and it's causing it to be a void in it right there it, it ain't really a void it just looks like it because some of those fibers that don't belong under there actually got pushed in there okay you can use a flathead screwdriver or anything like that i have a little miniature uh carpet all that i like to use here so i'm just going to take and pluck those fibers right out and that it's going to pretty everything right up. You just go along your whole edge right here. And if you have anything that needs a little attention to, just pluck those fibers out just like I am here. Once you get done, you can actually take a hammer and tuck it back down a little bit more if you want to. Or tap it back down a little bit more if you do any kind of raising up on it. Okay? So... Once you get that done, you should be nice and clean all along that edge. Got just a little something here on this edge. You can see in that corner, it looks like a little hole. So I'm going to take and pull those fibers out as well, just to pre it up. Okay. All righty. I think that takes care of us right there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use Z-Bar to transition carpet to uh, vinyl plank, carpet to linoleum, carpet down to, down to nothing in any situation. You do not want to use Z-Bar when you're joining to ceramic tile. You don't want to use it when you are joining to hardwood. Anything that has a lip on it where you're able to actually tuck your carpet in, you don't want to use Z-Bar there. Z-Bar is for working down to nothing or something very thin like a vinyl plank or a sheet vinyl product, okay? So 
This is the perfect way to do it without any of those unsightly metal transitions that you see so common in homes. Thank you guys for tuning in to the channel. Until next time, FBSB's out.